Welcome to Font Tribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Font Tribute. So hi everyone, hope you're having a great week. This is Thomas Jockin. And let's take a, basically move forward from what we discussed last week about old styles. And two old styles that surprised you. Um, I realized I figured by talking about that, I might want to demonstrate how other type designers approach kind of models, traditional models that we think of. Either be old style or transitional, like a Baskerville in this case, uh, and how they deviate or move around from it. I think a discussion about contrasting a Basker, a Canon typeface, or kind of what you're taught in the Type One class, like Baskerville, and a contemporary rendition of it or interpretation of those concepts might give you might give a lot of interesting ideas and concepts in type design. So let's get started. So I have here, basically we're going, we went from old style now to transitional. This is, so in a type 1 class, you'd be taught Baskerville, and then you would move over to this. I mean, from Garamon to Baskerville, excuse me. Um, so in this case, I have, as a con, as a comparison type phase, Harriet, Harriet Tex. So this was built as a type phase that's inspired by Baskerville and some other sources as well. Um, and I think it'd be a great demonstration to talk about some of the more particular points about a transitional typeface, in this case Baskerville, and how that relates to Harriet and how we go through thinking about that. So I think kind of generally you would notice if you looked at a transitional, transitionals are meant to be this movement between the old styles that had very calligraphic origins or thinking to moderns, which are these super rational, uh, rid kind of rational to the point of like to the T, everything's kind of mechanically figured out. And the degree of calligraphic sourcing is very, very, very minimal. In fact, it's almost next to zero, or the model is completely different than you would think of in a Garamond example. But a transitional is meant to be a transition transition between those two extremes. So it's meant to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. There's meant to be a little... the There's meant to be some things that are calling from the old older old style traditions and but we're seeing that some movements to closer to the moderns or something like a dito i would say for example if you thought from your type design from your type type one class so some particulars i think we can know just in general observations between harriet and baskerville one is that baskerville is higher contrast uh the relation of thicks to thins that's what i mean by this it's it's higher in baskerville um than it does in Harriet. So you can see that if you look at, well, I guess we can move forward to the first example. So here, I have an example. So here, I have the two capitals, H and the S next to each other. Uh, they demonstrate some of these differences that are going on in, in how these typefaces approach each other. So one, I mean, the general first one you would see is how the serifs are being treated in the H. So in Baskerville, we have these bracketed serifs that you would see that you would also see this in an old style, but in, as in contrast to old style, these bracketed serifs are more regimented. They're these flat, they're, it's not as blobby. If you recall, if you know from your type 1 class, Garamond, Garamond's very kind of organic, has a lot of like certain, um, a lot of organic nature to it. This Baskerville edition is much more rational in its treatment. The serifs are kind of flat squares, and then it brackets transitions from the serif to the stem in a relatively controlled manner. Uh, but with some more momentum on the horizontal than vertical mo movement between the serif and the stem and the H. Moving on with the Harriet, we see it's 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 kind of like a angled serif, but with a transition. So it's pulling, it is bracketing, but the bracketing, it's very different if you compare the two of how they move. Um, the degree of bracketing is much more in Baskerville than in Harriet. We can say that much. Uh, but also in general, the contrast between the two. You notice the, the thickness of the stem in, Her in Baskerville relates that to the serifs in the crossbar. Then look at Harriet and compare those things. The, obviously, the stems are heavier in both cases, but the degree and the difference of the, of the weight is not nearly as much. We can also see this pan down in the S. I like to I like to show this S to sh the show one this nature of contrast, right? So notice how more dramatic Baskerville is, uh, from the thickness of the spine, the heaviest part of that spine, to the movement over to the thin part of the stroke. It's much more dramatic, and it's in its effect than over in a Harriet. Uh, 
because the degree of difference is not as much. The contrast is not as much. Uh, they're both treating their serifs similarly. Their model is very similar. So you have this arching down, and then you have this spur kind of treatment on the top and bottom treatment together. So that's similar. So they're calling from the same source in that idea. Uh, but there are some differences, obviously, in degree. So like the size of these serifs are much larger and prominent in Harriet than they are in Baskerville. There's that observation. Uh, we can see about how much kind of how much fanging dip dipping down the S is doing over here in Harriet, top and bottom versus Baskerville. And again, look at the notice the thinnest part of the stroke in the S between the two of them. You can see that Harriet is heavier; it's thicker. So this is what we call a lower contrast typeface versus the higher contrast of Baskerville. So we can see that between already in the capitals, the deviation between the two. In the in the lowercase, I kind of always go to lowercase because I think a lot gets said in in lowercase letters. So there are a couple of things. Um, one was if you know, especially in comparison to the capitals, the capitals look they're about the equal height, right? They seem about there's some differences in their sizes by default, but they're relatively close. When we go to the lowercase, we can see clearly the x height uh, of the lowercase is much lower in Baskerville than in Harriet. Uh, we can see that much obs that much observation. Uh, the similar treatment of the serifs. Notice the serifs again are mirroring the uppercase in the in the in the feet serifs, the bottom serifs. What we have like the flag serifs is more getting streamlined. Uh, actually, Baskerville seems to be more calling from its older style of sourcing. Notice that angle, that kind of tipping back of this uh, this portion of the stroke over here, and then creates this semi flag serif. It's speak it's similar to the feet serifs, but it's a form that's slightly different, mainly because of how this area over here is treated. Harry is more streamlined. There's no dip over on the on the right side. Uh, and again, it has again this flag serif, but it's it's been kind of streamlined down. Actually remember that from your from I recall from old styles how they were treated and designed. I think the main thing I want to point it out is size obviously again like repeating of the contrast differences. Uh, the thickness of the stems to the, in this case, the joints over here and over here is the nature of this joint. Notice in Harry, it's a much more gradual movement. It's taking more time to move from the stem over to the shoulder. Baskerville is more abrupt. It goes, boom, it's starting from a higher point and moves more rapidly over. It's kind of a, instead of a move, smooth transition, it abruptly moves over. But both ideas, these, this nature of contrast in both of these, this is not a calligraphic pen or the thinking behind is not directly from that. This is a different style of contrast to create, keep a thin point over here and then very quickly, relatively quickly, controlled, gain weight over to the stem. Uh, but how they do so is different between the two of them. Harriet is much more gradual and smooth in this movement. Basketball is more abrupt. I mean, I think a lot of the reasons why for that is where the joint means the stem. Basically where that where they hit, the arching hits. It's uh, higher up in, Har in Baskerville, so therefore, it moves faster versus Har Harriet. Over to the A. So again, we can see the similar things, contrast differences. We won't bemoan the point. Uh, I think a big point of difference, notice, is the, ter is the ball terminal. Notice in Harriet, it's much more articulated. It's clear. It has a very clear contour, arcs over, then stops abruptly, then poof, comes over. Baskerville, it's just kind of more smooth down and more gradual in its overall treatment. Also notice how the balls are being handled and their counters are being handled. Harriet has this basically this arch up. It has a little bit of an arching on the upper part as it moves and then moves over. While Baskerville basically starts as a straight angle, as a flat angle, and then it arches down re relatively abruptly. So there's more of a abrupt movement kind of heading over to the left bottom side and then coming back up again. Uh, what is similar between the two of them, again, notice how these terminals are treated in the A. There's a move, kind of an arching up that's would be relatively difficult in a broadened pen to be treated. So this is calling from a different pen, like a nature of contrast, like a pointed pen with, would allow you to have a stroke created like that. So take a notice from that between the two of them. Over to the D, I think this is where we can see some difference between the two of them. So notice basketball is very systematic in how it moves from joint to the bowl in this case, from a, from a stem to a joint to another main stroke. It it's more abrupt and more angular in its treatment. It kind of pinches in. You can see over here and over here and over here. See so how these two pinches into their 
points in the stem and then arch over. And they kind of stay flat and then relatively abruptly move into the arch, arching on the left side, both in the outer, outer stroke and the inner stroke of this bowl and the counter inside. Harriet chooses to kind of play a little bit. There's this thickening on this right side, notice here, that contrasts that to Baskerville. So this is almost calling from like a pen, like a, a calligraphic sourcing. So it's a little bit of an interplay going on. Harry does not play so strictly to its house contrast gets distributed in the stroke. So there's a little bit of thickness and thickening. Then it comes over to the, we can say 12 o'clock, the high point of the arch. And then it comes down. And then it maintains the, uh, the relatively same stroke momentum getting back into the bottom part of the stem. Again, contrast that to basketball. Beyond the, the obvious contrast difference, the thickness of the strokes, see where things on the outer contour and the inner contour, when do they match together and when do they, or not out of sync, but in different, moving differently. Uh, basketball, they, try to, they basically try to catch up to each other by the time they get to the stem. Harriet's, I'm actually on the top part, they go by, they go at different momentums and then they, they start sinking, they sink in again uh, at the bottom part of the stem. The G is a pretty good indicator, lowercase g in this case, of an, of a transitional, especially this, I mean, but not even just transitional, just a Baskerville. I mean, Baskerville is kind of known for this open loop G. Both these type faces or fonts in this case, uh, you call that out. So these open loops in the bottom of the G, that's one of the clear ways to indicate. Uh, notice in Baskerville, the sharpness of this terminal and how it's drawn versus kind of the smoothness and arching over in Harriet. It's as if Harriet's kind of a, a more smoothed out, uh, softer uh, rendition of this thinking of the model of Baskerville. So, so let's look at some other points. Well, one also we can tell is the ear. Notice how the ears are treated differently. Harriet's ear, again, it's kind of mimicking what the A was doing in its bowl terminal. It's being very exact, clear, articulating of what it's trying to be. It arches over and then stops abrupt in a very sharp point and then comes back over again. Basketball allows for more gradualness in its movement across the outlines, getting back to the ball of the G between the two of them. And I'll close with the E. I think the E is a very interesting difference between these two of them. So one is Baskerville's, the, the crossbar of that E is much higher up proportionally to the letter in Baskerville than in Harriet. Uh, so you can say that because look at the counter and the I. Uh, you can see that's much smaller in basketball than in Harriet's. Also notice in Harriet an interesting decision where there's this angling of the inner counter of the eye, where the crossbar meets. Notice where it goes this diagonal stroke down like this versus the perfectly horizontalness of Baskerville. We can also see, again, the other main themes we're seeing across this whole project. The higher contrast in Baskerville and how the fins are being treated relative to the thick part of the strokes coming together in the difference between these two, two different typefaces. Okay, so what can we close by saying? So a couple of things. One, because of the generally larger X height of Harriet, this will be easier to read in text. You can get a, which was kind of a known issue in basketball. Basketball, I mean, in a general sense, usually does not perform very well in, or has a, not even doesn't perform on text sizes, it just has a common problem, which is it's smaller X, it's relatively small X height compared to most other typefaces leads to problems or leads to problems at smaller sizes. So a lot of typeface or type designers would design versions of Baskerville models, transitionals with larger X heights to compensate for that. Harry chose that solution with this Harry text edition with this larger X height. So we can see already, uh, if you were thinking about using these typefaces together, for example, I would maybe imagine using Harriet as body copy and this Baskerville typeface font in this case as a title. It's higher contrast, it's smaller X height. These scenes contribute to being perhaps a better choice for a headline setting and then sending your body copy to Harriet. They interrelate with each other. There's proportional similarities between the two of them, but there's just, there's enough differences in their in their forms that show different applications between the two of them. This is Thomas Jockin. I hope you've learned a lot from this from this week's episode of Font Tribute. What did you guys think? Did you guys learn anything from this project? What would you guys use these typefaces for? Love to hear you guys' thoughts. I hope you all have a great week. This is Thomas Jockin, and this has been Fontribute. Have a great week. Take care.